How to Run K6 Load Tests Using Jenkins. Running performance tests using Jenkins is quite common. However, if the data from those tests are not being visualized in a very useful way, it is difficult to use them as a real informational tool. In this video, we'll walk through how to use Jenkins to orchestrate the generation of load testing data from K6 into Grafana. Here's today's starting point. I have a Jenkins LTS controller version 2.319.1. Attached to this controller, I have a Linux-based agent, and on this agent, I have the K6 binary installed. There's also a sample repository for this video. The link to that repository is down in the description. Before we go take a look at that sample repository, let's walk through how the installation of the K6 binary was done. If we take a look at the K6 documentation, which can be found at k6.io, there's a whole page about using installation. I could have just used DNF install since I am using a CentOS-based agent, but I chose instead to go ahead and just download the K6 binary from the releases page. And on the releases page, the most recent version is 0.35.0. When I installed that binary, I just put it on the system path. Now let's take a look at our sample repository. What I have is a script.js, which is the normal file name for most K6 tests. Now you can name it anything you want, but I'm just following the standard. As we go through the documentation in K6, it will look very similar to what they are doing in their documentation. Now I've also created three Jenkins files in this repository. Well, let's take a quick look at script.js. If we take a look at this, this example, just doing an HTTP get against test.k6.io and then sleeping for one second, is the exact same example that is provided through the K6 documentation. So I'm just taking that, and then what we're going to do within our Jenkins file first is we're just going to run that test. But what does that Jenkins file look like? Let's look at Jenkins file one, and what we're going to see first is that we're first going to verify the version of the K6 binary before we actually even run the test, just to make sure that it's on path, and then we're going to do k6 run script.js. So let's go ahead and go back over to our controller and set up the job for k6 using Jenkins file one. So I'm going to copy my URL, go to HTTPS, copy that. Let's go back to our controller. We'll click on new item. We'll call this k6 pipeline, click OK. Then we will say pipeline script from SCM. The SCM is git. There's our URL. We'll change our branch to main. And then Jenkins file dash one is going to be the first job that we run. So let's click on save and then click on build now. And what we'll see here is we're running on agent one, which is where the K6 binary is installed. We do our clone. We do our K6 version. It tells us 0.35.0, which is the binary that I did install. And then we run the script. And what we can see here at the very beginning is we're doing local execution. The script that we're using is script.js. And the output is just a dash, which means just to standard out. And then we're running one scenario, one max VU. The maximum duration is going to be 10 minutes and 30 seconds. But in this case, we're not running it for 10 minutes and 30 seconds. We're just going to run it for one iteration. So we have one VU. And then we see all of the data that is outputted from K6. Now, obviously, this is a very simple example and actually a really good example to start with because we want to make sure that it actually just runs to begin with before we start scaling it. But what if I want to go ahead and run longer and with more users? Well, let's take a look at our Jenkins file dash two. Now, if we take a look at Jenkins file two, we're going to see approximately the exact same Jenkins file as Jenkins file one except we've added in two parameters. We've added in a dash dash VU set to 10, and we've set a duration to 30 seconds. Now, we've chosen to pass these parameters in to the K6 binary. Now, you could also change how you define that and place these configurations within your script file. But just because I want to be able to change these potentially even as parameters in the future, I want to leave the values here in line with the K6 binary. So let's go back over to our controller and let's modify our job 
to run the Jenkins file dash two. Now, what we're going to expect to see here is 10 VUs, 10 virtual users, and we expect this job to run for 30 seconds. So I'm going to click on build now, we'll fast forward through it, and then we'll take a look at the output. And we can see here, as we went through the fast forward, that we ran for a total of 30 seconds with 10 VUs. So if we look at just these last couple of items here, we were up to 10 VUs running at the same time. We had 200 completed. We had no interrupted iterations. And then for the very last one, we were down to zero. So it had completed and it ran for 30 seconds. And then we can look and see how much data was received, how much data was sent. And then we can also see from our wrap up that we had 10 VUs and 10 VUs max. One more thing at the very top, we still see the standard execution was local, the script was script.js, and the output was just only to standard out. Up to this point, we're only seeing the output of K6 in our console log. But what if we wanted to send that data somewhere else? Well, fortunately, K6 has a number of integrations with different visualization tools. The one that we're going to look at in this video, as we said in the introduction, is Grafana and specifically Grafana plus InfluxDB. And if we take a look at the documentation that's provided from K6, there is a whole page about using Influx and Grafana. And in my example, I already have Grafana and Influx set up. I also picked out a pre-configured Grafana dashboard for use with K6. If you look down in the description, I have a link to that specific dashboard that I imported into Grafana. When I imported that Grafana dashboard, it also gave me the configuration and the data source to connect to InfluxDB. So let's go take a look at our next Jenkins file. And for our Jenkins file three, what we have is, again, a similar line. We're gonna keep our 10 VUs and our duration at 30 seconds, but we're adding in an out parameter. And specifically, I'm gonna set up a connection to Influx and here is the endpoint where Influx is running and also the database K6 that is within Influx. So this connection string allows me to connect to Influx. Now you'll also notice here that there are no credentials defined. And that's on purpose because at this point, my InfluxDB does not require credentials. In a real life scenario, I would make sure that I have credentials on InfluxDB. And I could specify those credentials by using environment variables that InfluxDB provides for me. So I could specify a K6 underscore InfluxDB underscore username, and I could map that back to a credential from within Jenkins. So let's go ahead and go back over to our controller and let's modify our job one last time and call our Jenkins file three. But this time, instead of watching our console log, we're gonna be watching our Grafana dashboard, which we have right here. At this point, there's been nothing running for a while. In fact, let's go ahead and move it down to the last five minutes. We have not had any data coming into InfluxDB from K6. So let's go ahead and click on Build Now and go back over to Grafana and watch what happens. And if we take a look at this now, what we can see is that we are charting out 10 virtual users, which was true. Remember, we passed in 10 VUs. We can see that we're doing 10 requests per second. And if you think about our test, we're making a get call against the URL and then we're sleeping for a second. Therefore, since we are sleeping for a second and we have 10 virtual users, I would expect roughly to have 10 requests per second. And then we can also see our HTTP request durations. We had one spike over 256 milliseconds. We can see over time the number of request durations, requests blocked, and other options. Now this is just one of a handful of different K6 dashboards that already exist. You can go and create your own dashboard as well. But just for this example, I used one of the dashboards available to us through Grafana. And before we leave this, let's go back over and take a look one last time at our console output. Now, if we were to take a look at job run three, what we're going to see here at the very top, unlike what we saw before, is we have execution local, that's still the same, script is script.js, that's the same, but our output this time was to influx db. Now we still get the output 
coming out to standard out. And I'm okay with that because that's there. But what I really wanted to see here is that my output was being sent to InfluxDB. If you have any questions or comments, you can reach out to us on Twitter at CloudBees. If this video was helpful to you, give us a thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed to CloudBees TV yet, why not? Take a moment, click on that subscribe button, and then ring that bell, and you'll be notified anytime there's new content available on CloudBees TV. Thanks for watching, and we will see you in the next video.